Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and today we're checking back in on the Bamboo Labs P1S. Let's get into it. I gotta tell you, I love this printer. It has been absolutely fantastic. I'm continuously amazed or impressed by its reliability, its quality, its speed. Um, just it's all the things that I dreamed and hoped that I would have in a 3D printer back a couple of years ago or three years ago when I was getting into it. it at least the printers I <laughs> went in with at that time this weren't weren't ready, weren't at that level. It has the Bamboo Labs P1S has been all of that for me. So that's the first thing I gotta say is it's great if you're thinking about buying one, buy it. I don't think you'll regret it. I will say it hasn't been without some complexities and things that I didn't anticipate, but for the most part, I've just been super pleased with the printer. I am dreading uh, when something breaks on it because I know that's going to be a painful repair process. And I think there's documentation out there and support and, and I'm fairly handy, so I'll probably figure it out, but not looking forward to that. I just recently did uh, a couple of multicolor prints it really is just two colors in this case but I was so pleased with how it turned out and uh, I just it was just fantastic it was slow I'll admit it was slow it wasn't uh, blazing fast in that sense because it had to do so many filament changes but the resulting quality was great and I want to kind of talk through what this printer is doing that a lot of the other printers on the market aren't doing I, I printed both of these on the P1S they are not exactly the same model, but they're very similar. I, I kind of messed up on the magazine, but certainly the, the Jolly Rogers on them is the same. And um, this one I printed with a prime tower. This one I printed without a prime tower. Uh, from a sharpness, quality, everything, they look identical to me. Um, so I, I don't know um, that the prime tower is absolutely necessary. I've tried to do some research on whether the prime tower, what it gets for you, and I've gotten conflicting opinions. Some say that it just helps ensure that there's less risk of a situation where the filament doesn't extrude on your model um, due to a lack of pressure. Uh, that's one theory, um, so that it's very possible that's the case. In this particular print, didn't seem to make any difference. It does make a little bit of difference in time sometimes on how long to print as well as how much filament is used. One thing I want to show here, um, hopefully, uh, I'm just calculating this now, is I'm slicing this in bamboo labs to you know, kind of prepare it for printing. And as I've got it set up right now, I've got the prime tower enabled, and I've got my overall project time of 23 hours and 31 minutes. Um, so this is a pretty big project for for what this is, uh, four magazines. You can see here the prime tower doesn't go up beyond the top of the school because once you get above that, everything is black, so there's no need for the prime tower. The prime tower, like I said, is enabled by default. However, you can disable it. And let me just slice this plate, and I'll, I'll show you what happens when you slice it without a prime tower. Because I've, I've heard a lot of different opinions on whether you should use a prime tower, whether you shouldn't use a prime tower, what prime tower does, what it doesn't do. Um, generally, the advice I've seen is that you should use a prime tower anytime you're doing a multiple uh, color print because it keeps steady pressure on the print head and uh, less likely to have, um, you know, uh, a situation where it's trying to print on the object and, and filament isn't coming out for, you know, a stretch, which would cause, you know, gaps or skipped lines and so forth. However, um, when you look at the total time, the prime tower um, is actually a little bit longer than without the prime tower. And I think that was a surprise for me as well as several others that use their P1S because they thought, you know, by using the prime tower, it doesn't have to go all the way over to um, discard the uh, filament during the filament color change. Uh, I'm probably saying all those things wrong. Uh, it could just wipe it out on the uh, prime tower. But as far as time, that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, in this case, it's not very dramatic. It's only about... I have printed with and without the prime tower from a quality perspective. 
both turned out fantastic. I don't know if I just was rolling the dice and got lucky because it didn't have an impact on quality whatsoever, but it is something I thought I would point out. I, I don't fully um, know the, that whether it's important. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to check myself because this actually using the prime tower uses less filament, um, which is surprising to me. <laughs> prime tower with the prime tower uses less filament, takes more time. Without the prime tower uses more filament, but takes less time. I'm surprised at that. I don't know why that is. Okay. So you can see I have open here Bamboo Labs, and I have a project here. Uh, I actually have four uh, 22 round or 22 long rifle magazines here. Um, got the magazine model on Thingiverse, and then I doctored it up myself with a Jolly Roger uh, emblem, which my uh, I've always been into pirates. My family's into pirates, so we we love Treasure Island and Pirates of the Caribbean and everything. So I thought it'd be really cool to have like a, a pirate themed uh, AR build, particularly in the 22 long rifle. So what I did is I, I painted this, uh, I merged the the emblem onto the magazine, and then I painted it in Bamboo Labs, and, and then of course I just cloned these, which is um, you know just duplicated to print. Now I wanted to show a few things that are, are going on here, which you probably already know, but I'll point it out. This here is your prime tower. So whenever you have a, a multicolor print, uh, by default, it turns on this prime tower. Uh, it's enabled. And basically what it does is it prints a layer and then it goes over here and purges filament and kind of, uh, you know, builds up the tower as, of course, you are, are building up the, uh, the 3D object and printing it. Uh, a few things. One, this this preview isn't exactly right because the prime tower will stop once you get above the last line of white because the rest is just all black, right? <clears throat> but otherwise, it would just keep doing this prime tower. And you can adjust like the size of the prime tower and things, but these are kind of, I think, mostly uh, default. I may have tweaked this a little bit. Um, but in order to print an object, I'll just show you how this worked. Is you, I selected the object and then I click this icon here for color printing and there's multiple tools on how you can do it you can do like a, a circle and just start drawing on it you know not particularly effective I don't really like doing that kind of thing um, but you can do it that way the other thing is you can do a sphere um, which is literally what it sounds like there's a few limited cases where that's helpful and the same with a triangle, but I'll tell you where you really uh, are going to spend most of your time is going to be on the fill and this height range. So fill is, if you've ever used paint, you know what I'm talking about. You come in here and you can select a surface, right? So I could actually select this and paint that. Now my waffle pattern is all white as well, which is kind of, you know, kind of fun. I could have do, could have done something like that. Um, the other thing, you, and you can, got your colors here, so the other thing I could do is I could actually paint the uh, school with this filament color. And, you know, so it can get a little tedious when you got something with a lot of edges, and it depends on how you want it to be, if you want it all to be um, just on the outside or whether you want it to be, you know, in here. You know, you can get pretty, you know, pretty granular with this. And then if... For some reason your edge detection isn't working obviously you can go over and use that that circle you can make the size a little bit smaller you know so that you can you can cover exactly what you want you know instead of something else so that's how that it works uh it works really well um it greatly increases your print times um so something like this uh <laughs> um even with before all my changes, it was still going to be something like 23 hours to print four, um, four of these. And, uh, you know, <laughs> if I, with the changes I just made now, I bet that's going to go up significantly. Uh, and now since I got multiple colors, I've got more in my prime tower as well. So you do want to be very smart and careful with how you use your colors, but it turned out amazing. And um, I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. But all in all, super impressed with the multicolor prints on the uh, P1S. Now, I am a little choosy on when I use it because obviously it just takes so long. 
um, on a long front, there's more chance that something could fail, <laughs> which is never fun. You, you often start a 23 hour print and something fails. That's not great. But I will say that it's again, been very reliable and I'm going to be experimenting a lot more with the, the multicolor prints, probably even get into maybe like a, a again, the less filament changes you have, the faster that printing is going to be, but you can't go up to four, four colors. So, uh, with the AMS and that's that's kind of one of the biggest as I see it advantages it has over almost all the other printers on the market right now all right that's going to do it for this video it's just a light covering of the multicolor print on the p1s uh, there's a lot more to be tapped there there's a lot you can do with it uh, I'll try to get some more videos up on that but I just wanted to kind of show a high level how you paint an object and then print it and how it turns out I think it turns out outstanding and just super amazed at it um, and, and also, uh, I think it's cool to be able to do multicolor functional prints, something that I can actually use in life. So all those things are cool. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If not, stay tuned. There's a lot more videos on the way. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.